Welcome to the Oak Hall expedition to Hong Kong and China. 69 of us have flown out here for the start of what will be one of the most fascinating of the many Oak Hall expeditions. We're going to spend two weeks in together and first of all we have four days here in Hong Kong in the busy streets and the many sites. Following that we cross the border into mainland communist China we spend a week there before returning to Hong Kong again. One of the main things about the expedition is the opportunity to meet with one another as Christians, but also to meet the Chinese Christians here in Hong Kong and over in China. We expect to have plenty to do during the coming fortnight. There are one million people who live on Hong Kong Island. The other four million live in Kowloon and the New Territories. And there's certainly a problem with moving such a large number of people around Hong Kong. We're actually on the MTR, the Mass Transit Railway, and we're going to be taking this through to Hong Kong Island. By way of contrast to the MTR, which is fast and shifts vast numbers very quickly under the streets of Hong Kong, there are the old trams which are still on the main Hong Kong Island. These were built at the turn of the century and provide a very interesting and exciting way of seeing Hong Kong. You can pay just 60 cents, which is about uh, 6p, and travel for as long as you want to and as far as you like on the tramway system. From the top deck with the open windows, you can see the life of Hong Kong going on around you. We're in the central area, which is the business part of Hong Kong, and I think everybody knows of all the many big financial deals that are carried out.
包台唔係個晚餐㗎。traveling down the river um, this is where the junks are and there are about 3,000 junks and 20,000 people actually live here some people have never even set foot on land and they have always lived on the water as you can see it's it's such a big contrast between the boats here and the skyscrapers that you can see in the distance and it's it's just amazing that you think that some people have never even set foot on land.
Stanley Market, having just arrived after a really bumpy journey. To my left and behind me, we have loads of different stalls selling everything from silks to gems, anything you want. You can buy it here at very reasonable prices. Would you like to join me on a tour? I'm standing now in the market stall area in Stanley and this is a traditional souvenir stall. It's got lots of lovely paintings. There's oil paintings which are very cheap, 28 Hong Kong dollars. There's also um, material, pictures with material. Um, and further back here, more paintings. <laughs> Over on the side, and some lovely jewellery, um, which is again about our price. So if you want to come to Hong Kong, this is the best place to actually get souvenirs. It's a very nice market and the stalls are all in long rows um, and the people are very friendly and very willing to help. You don't have to bargain too much and it's a very nice atmosphere down here. Here you can see some fine examples of silk clothing that can be found in the market. Very many bright colours with intricate patterns printed and embroidered onto the very fine and delicate fabric. The sizes range from children's wear right up to adults. The jackets have very fine piping detail and intricate twisted buttons on the front, many with contrasting colours to highlight the fastening as the garment closes on the person. What have you bought? Going on to children's clothing, many of them are simple, small, productions of the adults wear with embroidery full of colour and adventure and excitement to make the garment a distinctive orient. Well here we are at the end of Stanley Market after a really interesting trip around the shops. We're shattered, skint and completely sticky and now I'm just going to collapse in a heap with all my buys and have a drink of this lovely lemon tea. This is the Haven of Hope Christian Hospital situated in Junk Bay which is in the new territory of Hong Kong. The hospital was opened originally for refugees in the 1950s. Some of the officers of the Nationalist Forces coming down being as refugees from China. It started as a TB hospital but now it's for uh, chest patients, uh, orthopedic patients, the terminally ill patients, they have a hospice program started and also for TB patients that are coming off drugs. Um, there is a spiritual ministry within the hospital, about 40% of the staff are active Christians, but in the next year or so it's going to be redeveloped and this 300 bedded hospital will become a a 600 bedded hospital, approximately 600 beds, which will be catering for the city which is developing in the near vicinity. believe that uh, unless they're really as it were addicted to the things of the Lord that they really cleave to the things of the Lord that this is the own, only real surety that they're not going to cleave again cling to, to drugs.
very interesting for me because I, I work in Thailand in a mission hospital. about 7,000 people here. When they demolish it, they will probably just dynamite the, the, the houses up because they're quite, if you look at them, they're stone houses, generally two-story. And then they will take the mountains, move the mountain, move it into the sea, and then they will build high-rise flats for about 100,000 people. So the whole face of this is going to change in about three years' time, years for these people. So it'll only be sowing the seeds, but pray that these will develop in years to come as they're scattered to different places. Our home, I'll take you up there, but it's, it's not very big, and I think I could probably get more than 10 or 12 of you in the sitting room. Um, and it's not very tidy either, actually. <laughs> I only got back on Sunday, and I seem to have been running since. But back at the fire station, over to the right, we live on the... Uh, it's the ground floor and we live on the first floor, it's just two floors. I do hope that you've enjoyed your trip around Venice Mill. This is the, the end of the tour around there and I'm sure you've enjoyed seeing the different people that we live with and work with here in their different occupations. And in two or three years time this place will be demolished and high rise flats will be built here. Please pray for the particularly these coming two years as we seek to have an outreach amongst them in different ways that they may hear the gospel and hopefully turn to the Lord. The takeover will be in 1997. Please pray for the people of Hong Kong that in these days of opportunity they'll really consider the claims of, of Jesus Christ.
Well, having spent three very interesting days in Hong Kong, we're now travelling across Hong Kong Harbour to take the train across to Canton. We've explored the city centre, we've been on the local trams, and yesterday we were out with a missionary couple at a refugee village, seeing something of the missionary work that's being done out there. I think we're in for some changes today as we take the air-conditioned train out from Hong Kong, over the border and into Canton. For us this will be mainland China and all the interest that there will be there. Having arrived here in Canton, today is Sunday and we've just taken a very exciting ride across the city, dodging the bicycles and the trolley buses to arrive at one of the churches that's allowed to be open here. It's actually one of the three self-movement churches and we've been given a very real welcome as we've arrived with our hymn books and Bibles presented to us. We know the service is going to be mainly in Chinese, but just to have fellowship with other Christians here in Canton is sure to be a real blessing to us, and we trust to them as well.
咗我哋誠心祈禱，地的聖潔都看見我們上帝的救恩，全地都要向耶和華歡呼。
As you settle down for your cup of tea here in the ceramics factory, could I again welcome you to Foshan after our rather wild journey here of just 17 miles, taking us about an hour and a half. I think you're going to find it interesting here at the factory after you've enjoyed your cup of tea. This is a place where they make all kinds of designs for ceramic work, and you'll see ladies here in the factory working very hard they earn three pounds a week. They work six days out of seven. They have no holidays in the year apart from the bank holidays. You'll see them carving very intricate designs in the cork, also painting the models of the warriors that have been modeled on the ones that have been found up near Peking. Outside, you've got the fountains playing, so when you want some fresh air, you can go out there and enjoy a break from being in a factory. So in a moment, when you've finished your cup of tea, we start our tour of the factory. Thank you. Together. And sometimes 
creature to break the skin of the animal, such as the buffalo, the lion, the birds, and so on. And water is used to make the surface of the meat more smooth. in the middle of Canton with cars trailing down, raining down on us on either side and fire engines and things. We just had a wonderful journey in a Chinese bus but unfortunately it didn't take us to the place we thought it was going to so instead we'll have to sit in a nice cool hotel. What a shame. into the new China Hotel where Julie is now demonstrating the art of bowling.
We'd like to welcome you to our Canton Free Market here. At present, we're with Oak Hall Expeditions walking down through the free market. And as you can see, there are lots of things available for the local people to buy, as well as tourists. Isn't there, Chris? <laughs> Excuse me, may we ask you what you think and feel about the Canton Free Market? Well, it's the first thing that hits you really is the smell. Um, it's a really strong, um, sort of herby type um, aroma. Um, and they, they seem to be selling medicines of all different types. Um, I notice over at the back there they've got um, bits of bits of wood and uh, catalysts and things like that. I've no idea what they're for, but um, no doubt the Chinese know. Do you think they might be using it for different types of remedies, for different diseases? The people would come here or that they'd market the hospital from here? Um, possibly. I wouldn't like to say. I mean, we don't use them in my hospital, but maybe over here. Um, I don't know. I mean, this, for instance, looks like calomel tea. Even that's different to English calomel tea. Um, I mean, they'll use that for to aid restful sleep. It's also used to blonde the hair, but it's not appropriate here. <laughs> and would you like to come in to talk? It's the smell that hits you the first thing, and and the people. There's just so many people everywhere. It's unbelievable, and so many different things that we've never seen before. It's so so strange, so different. Do you feel you've adjusted to the smell within the first five minutes? Oh yes, definitely. Yes, it, you get used to it. You don't notice it after a while. Yeah, but it's it's just all the people. It's the way they look at you. They think we're so weird. Absolute strangers. Well, thanks very much for your time. We might move up and see what else we can find further on in the market. Thank you. Excuse me, can I just ask you what your first impressions of the market are? It's incredible. There's such a variety of fruit, vegetables and animal bits and pieces. It's a very interesting market. What do you think the people think about you? I don't know. I think they're quite curious to know precisely what we're doing looking around, especially as I'm not really buying anything. Photographs as well seem to have amused them. Would you buy anything here? No, I don't think I would because so far all I've seen has been fairly unusual and I wouldn't know what to do with it. Do you think you do really good bartering here? No, there again, I think I'd be at a loss because I don't speak Chinese. That's going to be a serious handicap. Thanks very much.
what you think of this? Yeah, well, it's quite sad really, isn't it? Always the way they're treating all the little kittens and things. Yeah. Would you buy anything here? Um, no, I haven't seen anything I want yet. <laughs> what do you think about all these animals being killed and the fish and that? Well, I guess if they want to eat them, that's their business, so... Eh? <laughs> what do you think about the smell? I've got a cold, so it doesn't worry me. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about it? No, really. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, I wonder if I can just ask you uh, one or two questions. Um, what's your, having walked through the market, what's your impressions of it? Well, I think I'd like to eat a snake pie now. Really? No, actually I don't. I was rather shocked. I don't like blood. And, um, and what exactly did you see? Can you describe it? Well, a very busy, hustly bustly, um, very confusing scene, lots of stalls, cats, uh, snakes, turtles, all sorts of things. And in the, and at the back of it all, uh, you know, the chickens being killed and um, then they're being sold a little, little further along. I don't think I'll eat chicken again. <laughs> no chicken and chips for you then. I'll make do with fish. Um, and uh, and what else, as you've walked down this part, what exactly have you seen? Um, all sorts of tourist stuff for sale, people grabbing you, saying hello, hello, come and see what I've got. Um, you know, the sort of things that you buy in the shops. And are they cheaper down here that, than in the friendship stores? I actually haven't learnt to uh, either read or write Chinese yet, so it's a bit difficult to know. Well, that's all from me. Thank you. This evening we're travelling down the Pearl River, the third largest river in the whole of China. In fact, some of the water that we're floating on undoubtedly will have come from the snows of Tibet, the melting snows of the Himalayas. But it looks very different just here, just two hours away from the mouth of the Pearl River. We're travelling down with Canton on both the left-hand side and the right. On the north side, the left side, we have the restaurants and we have the homes where people live. On the right hand side is the industry. So each morning and evening there's a rush hour of, of uh, bicycles going over these bridges. We're going to be on the river for two hours in total and it'll provide us with an insight as to what the nightlife is like. We'll be passing a restaurant which is decorated with lights and looks like one of the old traditional Chinese houses. It's the sort of floating restaurant that the Chinese would go to for some special occasion. At the other end of the spectrum, we'll be seeing the floating junks, the sampans going past us, together with old freighters almost sinking in the water. We're being provided with the ship, which has the name Zhu Zi, which we think, being translated into English, means the saucy Sioux. Did you say we can't go yeah. down there? No, we can go past this point.
gentlemen, I wanted to say welcome to Lotus Village in the pouring rain. We're actually on the teeming main metropolis of this village and over on this side here you've got the little village houses which stand on stilts. We thought that as there's so many of us, what would probably be better is to go to the entrance to the Lotus Mountain Park to give you your maps and then you could make your way up the Lotus Mountain and on your return, individually, wander down the little alleyways. As I mentioned earlier, the people are very friendly, won't mind you looking into their homes, most of which are just one room on stilts. Some of them are actually embedded in the river itself. You'll see the little shops, as well as, of course, the motorised transport that they use. But don't forget to go off in that direction, down to some of the homesteads, where you'll see the bullocks and the people in the paddy fields planting the rice for the coming rainy season when it eventually arrives. And so we'll make our way to the Lotus Mountain and it's in this direction you need to go individually to look around the village alleyways. Thank you.
still can't work out where the rice actually grows. Yeah, there's some good ones of that on the train, weren't there? Yeah. Coming in. Mm. Oh, she's gone. Yeah. Okay.
Welcome. We are at our local Chinese restaurant and this evening we've got a very special visitor. Over here we have Panda who has come to show us the right way to use chopsticks and what a star. As you can see he's holding them the exact right way and just going about to dive into the food to get, <laughs> to get a mouthful of deliciously cooked and it's an egg, but it's a delicacy in this restaurant. <laughs> munch, 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 munch. Yum, 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 yum. Isn't this delicious? Leave me alone. This is supper time, oh cool, 10.30 at night. Everyone's having a whale of a time, tucking into their meal, feeling thoroughly sick at any sort of meat that comes out because we've been to the uh, fresh market today. We've seen fish being killed. Um, we've seen all kinds of horrible animals standing up in various stalls and they look absolutely disgusting. Half of them are alive and some are dead. And nobody feels like anything to eat. But we're all having a whale of a time here. And I'm just going to talk to a few people and see how they feel about their meal tonight. Hi Robert, I just want to ask you what you think about this disgusting meal we've had tonight. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really think I ought to comment. Oh, not oh, come on, be game. Be game. I haven't eaten much. <laughs> Why is that? Sing us a song, Walter. Sing us a song. What would you like me to sing? Uh, Do what? A Beatles number. No, I'd rather tell them about the food. <laughs> um, well, we've had the soya stuff every night so far. <laughs> and nobody's eaten any of it. So why they keep bringing it, I don't know. It's probably the same stuff. This stuff smells like the market. <laughs> Please, it's private video. <laughs> the egg's all right. There's nothing wrong with the egg. Yeah? Yeah, all right. Um, sweet and sour's okay. We've had that every day. Um, and the mushrooms aren't bad. So, it wasn't bad tonight. Jolly good. Right? So you'll come every night, will you? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Wouldn't miss it for nothing. Thanks very much. <laughs> Excuse me there. Come on, just tell us what you feel about this meal tonight. Come on. Am I full of rice? That's fine. <laughs> just spit it out and carry on. Well, it's it's interesting. The soup has so many different bits in it, you know? Fish tails, fish eyes, chicken bits, bits that you don't know about. Uh, <laughs> and such like. Th this th this fish is nice. It's very very tasty. It's nice and strong flavour. Good texture. Uh, excellently presented with fish tails dangling about the plate. Is it dead? Well, the bit that I've eaten is. <laughs> well, it is now. There have been a few movements around the plate. <laughs> 
But you, I mean, you never know what that might be. <laughs> the spot? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we found a bit of bone in the floor. And what was that come from? Oh, we weren't quite sure because it wasn't from here. <laughs> it could have been anything. And uh, um, it was still moving. You're joking? No, I'm not. It was. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Ocean Park in Hong Kong, back from the rather different scene in China. We're visiting Ocean Park for the first time and we've been told quite a few things about the place. And I'm going to ask Jim here, uh, looking rather nervous, rather shy, so don't laugh at him and we'll see how it gets on. Right Jim, how do you feel about entering this Ocean Park when you've heard all the rumours from Ian Mayo about uh, the Dragon Ride. The Dragon Ride, right. Well, I've heard a lot about the Dragon Ride and we talked about it back in England because we're quite keen on roller coaster rides, you know. That's it. And, and I've been to Disneyland, so I've 
Well, you they, I've been around a little bit, yeah, so, and they're pretty wild there, so I'm not sure how this will measure up. From what Ian says, it is, it is quite extreme, and I think maybe it's going to have the edge on anything in Disneyland, so I'm feeling maybe a bit anxious about this dragon ride, to be honest, but we'll see. We'll see how it shapes up. Have you had a lot to eat this morning? I had a very light breakfast, actually. I was anticipating this ride, so I, I just had cornflakes, a few pieces of toast, and I thought that'd be enough. So it'd be quite safe for someone to stand underneath when you were going round and I round and so. round? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, if there's going to be any sort of problem like that, and I knew it, I wouldn't get on in the first place. Have you got your trunks with you? I have no trunks, no. no trunks? You're not going no, to be no swimming? Trunks, no, no. I'm just going to enjoy the things, enjoy the things inside the park. And how, what else has happened to you in this trip? Have you been affected by anything in this trip? Seeing contrast between poverty and, and affluence and anything else? Yeah, certainly. Certainly inside. In, in Hong Kong it struck us first of all, and of course more so in China. Um, I think what struck me most of all in China was the, <laughs> was the illness actually, which drew a cloud over everything else. But, Certainly, in, in, it was an eye-opener in China to see the way other people live. I mean, you see it on the TV and it's, it's just completely different when you see it in real life. Do I keep going? I can't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Hamish, here we are, admiring the dragon. What's your first reaction to it? Well, it hasn't got any flame at the moment. Uh, it, looks fairly, um, it looks fairly good in the distance, but uh, we'll have to see what it gets like when it's uh, a bit closer up. And you're going to go on it, are you? Um, I'm thinking so at the moment, uh, from this distance, yes. I don't know how I feel when I get a bit closer. And uh, what did you have for breakfast so we know what to expect? I an Ameri American, style, uh, American style breakfast, two over easy eggs and... Uh, <laughs> and a couple of rushes of bacon. That's, that's really nice. Okay, we'll find out later, won't we? Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hi there, Rob. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Excellent. Looking forward to uh, later on today, are you? I think so. We're looking forward to the dragon. Uh, you don't have any fears about it at all? I have been flying before. <laughs> Oh, but that's something a, a little bit different, isn't it? Uh, look at all those um, look at all those twists and bends. What do, you, what do you make of those? I've also looped the loop and done some barrel rolls in a light aircraft. So in fact, you're going to find it um, sort of very easy and, and, and no trouble at all. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Oh, he's a confident man here. Very confident. Ask me again when we actually get onto the ride. <laughs> Anything in particular that we should look for when we uh, when you get off the uh, the dragon? Make sure you don't fall over. You don't fall over. Nothing to do with... You, you don't feel that uh, you might have a slightly queasy stomach at any stage on the trip. They do provide sick bags. They do provide sick bags. So you'll, you'll very discreetly lean to one side and nobody will see what you do. Absolutely. We look very much forward to, uh, to seeing your sort of coolness when we, uh, when we get off. And uh, uh, I'm sure that you'll be showing all of us up. Because I'll, I'll be completely sick lying on the ground. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Captain Hardy on the flight deck. Very good, Whoa. yes, thank you. I see you've just come from looking at the Dragon Roller Coaster. What's your impression of it? Well, before I came, I was pretty sure I didn't want to go on it, and having seen it, I am absolutely sure. And I think I'm going to be very magnanimous and offer to man all the cameras while other people have a, a go on it, and I shall take photos of people as they come off. And Possibly we may see some pretty green faces. We're also having a look at the theatre this afternoon, the Ocean Theatre. What do you expect to see in the animals there? Oh, I'm looking forward to that very much. I imagine there'll be dolphins doing their party tricks and uh, that will be great. Thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was a dragon? 
Well, I haven't got much to leave, actually. I'm a bit poor, I'm a Scot, you know, I haven't got a lot of money. Oh, so, right, come on, come on. Our last breakfast in Hong Kong, in a cafe where many Hong Kong people come to have breakfast before work, a contrast between having breakfast in our normal homes in Britain. We've had a very, very interesting and exciting time in Hong Kong and China, and we hope that as you watch the video and hear the message from Ian Mayo, that you'll be challenged in the same ways that we were after the trip.